Hey guys, so I am at the Yo's house. I have Hi. Kelsey here with me. We're getting ready to film a kombucha making video. Yeah. You know, I've been making kombucha for a while now, right? Mm -hmm, a few years. So it's always been something that I wanted to do, but I was always a little bit afraid and I never really had anyone to ask. So I'm really happy that Kelsey is willing to help me make it. Yay! Today, so. We're gonna have fun. Yeah, it's gonna be so fun. So Kelsey's gonna talk a little bit about scobies. Yeah, so people mistake scobies for mushrooms. They call it the mushroom. It's not a mushroom. Um, it's actually a culture or like a little colony of good bacteria. That may sound really gross, but that's what it is. Um, so it forms this scoby, and that's what it's called. And um, basically how it's formed is, and I'm, we're gonna show you how to make kombucha, but um, black tea, it has um it has like a compound that actually feeds the scoby and then sugar and it somehow creates this little monster yeah <laughs> i am not a science person i don't know why it does this all i know is the benefits of kombucha are amazing um so if you're looking to um improve your gut health um or even lose belly fat um just improve overall wellness especially in you know um, boost your immune system during the winter months um or really any time um which is definitely something that would help you with that so yeah that's awesome and if you don't know um having good gut health is kind of like your gut is like the center of your overall wellness yeah, right exactly. so if you don't have good gut health there's a good chance that there's other areas in your body that may not be very healthy you either. may experience yeah if you don't have good gut health you could experience migraines you could have candida problems yeah, and um, that you can could, lead to all kinds that, of things like skin uh, issues skin and, problems mm -hmm. and um, digestive issues and um, just yeah being sick a lot like those are all things yeah. that are caused by poor gut health yeah um, so kind of a way I explain it so uh, kombucha has um, really really high amount of probiotics which is good mm -hmm. bacteria mm -hmm. and how I like to explain it is um, we want to keep the good bacteria and bad bacteria to a ratio of like 80 20 yeah. where 80% good bacteria can control the 20% bad bacteria. Having 80 police officers uh, in a room to with 20 with. criminals, okay. right? The police officers will make sure those criminals can't do much harm. But if it's flipped and there's 80 criminals and 20 police officers, those criminals are gonna take over and the police officers can't really All do right. much of anything. <laughs> so that's kind of like the way I like to describe it to people. Yeah. So they understand it's pr pretty much impossible unless you live in a bubble somewhere to have like a hundred percent like good bacteria. Yeah. It's just it's just impossible. Yeah. But what we can do is we can get that ratio from ten percent, twenty percent, thirty percent up to eighty, ninety yeah. percent um, by drinking um, kombucha and then also other fermented vegetable or yeah. fer fermented foods like mm -hmm. fermented vegetables yeah. um, and things like that. So. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's great. Okay, so we're getting ready to make so kombucha. This is about four cups of water there. Okay. Um, and then we're doing four cups approximately because we've got maybe like 45, 50 ounces. You know what? I may um, actually even jar. do... You know, no, I'm just going to do four cups because actually we have to add water at the end. So, okay. okay. We're going to do four cups. So, we've got four cups of water here. Um, we're going to uh, let this come to a boil. Now, you definitely don't want to... Um, put hot water on your scoby. So what we're doing is we're boiling this water because we have to in order to steep the, the black tea and for the sugar to dissolve, but then we're gonna let it cool. And once it's cool and room temperature, that's when we can add it to the scoby. Okay. You don't wanna burn your scoby. If you burn your scoby, you're gonna destroy all of the ba good bacteria and then your sco scoby is basically gonna be dead. That's so don't, sad. don't, don't, yeah, don't heat your scoby, don't heat your kombucha, don't put it anywhere near like hot, you know, um, surfaces or anything like that. Um, but we do have to bring this to a boil. That's the first thing we're gonna do. So we're just gonna let that bring to a boil and yeah. then we're gonna add some sugar. And then we're gonna add, yes, we're gonna add um, black tea, black tea and sugar. Okay. We'll probably add about a cup of sugar. Okay. Um, to and it's gonna be eventually. This is gonna be six cups of water. Well, six cups of black tea, um, and then a cup of sugar. 
Okay. So that's the ratio. Okay. Basically. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. And this is organic sugar. I mean, it is still sugar, but you may, you may, if you're sugar free and you're not familiar with kombucha, the SCOBY eats the sugar, um, as we mentioned. That so it when you go to drink so it doesn't it. act. When you go to drink it, it doesn't. The kombucha doesn't contain any sugar, or it only contains a very, very tiny amount. Um, so you don't have to worry if you're sugar free and you're freaking out like, oh my gosh, a cup of sugar, no way, can't do this. Um, the scoby has to have the sugar to eat. And that's what turns. That's why it's so enzymatically activated. That's why um, there's a ton of probiotics in there is because that that all grows off of that sugar. So. Cool. Yeah. Exciting. Okay, so it's coming to a boil, and we're going to use just an organic black tea. Two bags of it right here. And yeah, we're uh, just going to steep that for a little bit, right? Yeah. I'm going to... And you can use loose tea if you, you want, can, and then yeah. either put it in like a little strainer, or like a little mesh thing, um, or just strain it out at the end, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. But if you have bag <clears throat> tea, which is sometimes easier to find... Um, just getting like a nice organic. I like to get organic just because, I mean, it, I feel like it's a little bit better. Especially with teas, um, you don't want any kind of pesticides in your kombucha. So, yeah, I like to buy organic. Alrighty, right. so it's basically boiling, so I'm going to turn it off. And let it steep for a let few. Let it steep for a few minutes. Perfect. All right, All so right, we're adding the sugar to this because it's hot and we want the sugar to dissolve. So that's, we're going to add a cup sugar so that it's a cup and we're gonna just let it dissolve in the hot in the hot water now do you have to use black tea yeah it does it's have really to be black tea? it really is best to use black tea some people use green tea I haven't really um, I, I well I have experimented I have done green tea before but for whatever reason, the, the SCOBY doesn't do as well. Hmm. There's something in the black tea, and I forgot what it was called, but there's a particular antioxidant in the black tea that actually helps the SCOBY. Um, and it actually helps the SCOBY, like, basically nourish it. Okay. Um, so green tea doesn't have that particular antioxidant. Black tea is, is definitely by far the best tea, tea to use. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So what about how you can go to the store and find like flavored mm -hmm. kombuchas? What is the what is the like rule on that? What is the process? Um, can you do that at home? Or? Yeah. So the first fermentation is where we're gonna add the the tea to this, and then you, you're gonna cover it with a paper towel and allow it to breathe mm -hmm. um, for about a week, week and a half. You're gonna kind of test test it a little bit, and when it when you can taste that the, there's no sugar and it's more sour, almost like it, it may even taste a little vinegary mm -hmm. to you, um, then that's when you'll know, okay, majority of the sugar is gone. That's when you can add some fruit juice of some kind. You could do grape, you can do raspberry, you can do whatever you want. And that's when you can do the second fermentation. So you add your fruit juice, um, desired fruit juice, not a lot, just a little bit to flavor it. Um, and then that's when you do the second fermentation and that's when you seal this like so and there there's no like this, this this won't be able to breathe <laughs> anymore and what it'll do is actually it'll become effervescent so kind of bubbly mm -hmm. um, and that's called the second fermentation so the first fermentation takes about a week week and a half um, and then the second fermentation takes um, four to five days okay yeah. Good to know. So that doesn't take very long at all. Mm -mm. So I've made sauerkraut before. I think I put it in a vlog maybe like a year ago. Um, so I can try to link that down below. But um, I've made sauerkraut before and it takes like closer to a month. Oh to yeah, make it sauerkraut does to, like, take a long time. Ferment. So mm -hmm. this is much faster. Yeah. So Especially good. this is a very large SCOBY. So yeah. um, it won't guy. take that long. And you can separate SCOBYs too, right? Yeah, so you can. So, you how can would just, one do that? You can give those away, you can sell them, um, you can do whatever you want with them. Yeah. One scoby will keep growing and then it'll make, you can make more scobies out of it. Little baby scobies. <laughs> how much scoby do you think you need to like start? Is it just like a little bit would be you okay? Really don't, yeah, you, you, yeah. A uh, little bit would be okay, but it would just take longer? 
a little bit longer yeah it'll just take longer to eat the sugar that is a very mature scoby so it'll eat the sugar within a week this has been maybe less than five minutes i would say yeah so we added um two cups of ice you can add um water but we did ice today and then we're gonna add it to our jar with our scoby a funnel is a really great way to not make a mess exactly and this Okay, so. note to self, get a bigger jar. I think I had it in my head that this jar was a lot bigger than it actually is. It's okay, it works. That will uh, probably be eating that sugar up pretty soon. So I would test it in a few days just to see, you know, the sweetness and stuff. And then um, if it's once still it's too like sweet, sweet. Yeah, then once it's kind of almost sour, you can do the second fermentation. You don't have to add uh, fruit juice, but I mean, it's fun. To add a little flavor to it. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's, I mean, that's how easy it is. It's really not hard or complicated to make a, to make kombucha. Once you have a scoby, I actually made these scobies. Um, like like I homemade them myself. Um, I got uh, just a bottle of GT's original kombucha, not the flavored ones. And then I made some sugar tea, like some black tea and sugar. And I just made my own little scoby. It took forever, but. That's where those came from. That's cool. And yeah. so you saw this one that we have in here. He's a really big guy. Yeah. And then Kelsey's got one about the same size. Uh huh. Um, in her other jar too. Yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. It's like having a pet though. You have to like once you have them, you, feed it. you have to feed it, and you can't like you can't leave if you travel. You need to like bring it with you or have someone watch it. I mean, it seriously is like having a pet. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's a fairly low maintenance pet if you just have to feed it. It's yeah, like exactly. A fish. It's like a it's like a fish. Oh, yeah. It's kind of gross now that I'm like it's looking really gross. at it. It looks like like an oyster out of its shell or something. It like totally that. does. And it's really He's really slimy. it's really big too. Like this is a big jar. <laughs> yeah. It's huge. Okay, so that's it. So we're gonna close them up for now. So I can take him home. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then you can put a, and then a paper home, towel I'll with him, a rubber band. Let him breathe. And then let it breathe and then for about a week and then test it um, and see where it's at with like how, you know, if you like it a little sweeter, totally up to you. There's just going to be a little more sugar. If you like it nice and sour, then just leave it for a week or two and then test it and see where you're, where it's at. And then yeah, do the second fermentation, add your fruit juice to it or whatever you want to flavor it. Um, and then if, like you said, like four to five more days? Yeah, four to five more days, but sealed. Not sealed like sealed the without. Yeah, so you take the paper towel off and then the second fermentation, um, you would up. want to seal it. Beautiful. Perfection. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you make kombucha. So we just got done making our kombucha. And I'm so excited to, you know, be a Scooby yeah. parent. You're a Scooby parent. Congratulations, Rachel. You are <laughs> officially Scobie. a Scooby parent. <laughs> yeah, so this is going to be really exciting. Mm -hmm. And I will update you guys probably in the vlog. Leave happy comment down below. Have you ever yeah. made kombucha? Like, what do you guys do? Do you like to add juice to yours? Do you, like, what... Well, we need some, you know, good recipes are always welcome. Yeah. Um, yeah. And make sure that you subscribe so that we can check on my SCOBY. <laughs> I'll give you guys some updates on how it's doing. Yeah. Um, and how my kombucha is. But I wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, this is how to make kombucha. And it's it was really easy. Was super, super easy. That took like 20 minutes. And the longest yeah. part was waiting for the water to boil. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So thank really you guys easy. so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave a happy friendly comment down below and subscribe and we will see you in another video. Bye!